All right, everyone, so here we are with another From the Coach's Desk. I'm Jordan, this is Jake, and today we want to talk about exercise mastery and how, neat, how good you need to be uh, at a movement in order to get something out of it. Jake, what are some thoughts that you have on exercise mastery? Well, I think first of all, when it comes to how good you do an exercise, right? First of all, you need to be able to do it safely, okay? yeah. whether it's a deadlift, um, whether it's kettlebell movement, you need to be able to actually do the movement and not hurt yourself. That's probably the most important thing. Secondly, um, you want it to be effective and you want it to actually accomplish what you're trying to achieve, right? Whether it's getting stronger or, or getting faster. Now, I think we have to understand that mechanical efficiency, how well you do something, right, will always lead to a higher quantifiable output, yeah. right? If you were a more efficient runner, technically you could be in worse shape than someone who runs really shitty right, but he's in really good shape. And you could outrun that person, that's, that's very obvious. Same thing, you can see it very clearly with Olympic weightlifting. Yeah, it's swimming I think too, right? Oh, God, being, being a, yeah, proficient in the yeah. water. Put me in the water <laughs> next to someone like, who in the gym who probably can run, half, you know, I don't know, 75% yeah. of my potential, yeah. and they could probably crush me, yeah. even if they weigh 30 pounds more, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so mechanical efficiency is always gonna basically translate to a higher output, okay? But, we have to kind of, keep this in mind and understand like, hey, what's our main goal and how much time do we want to spend, right, trying to improve things that may not be relevant, right, to you building fitness. For example, I don't own a boat that has oars. So like for me, my rowing efficiency, aside from being a, a gym owner, right, how efficiently I row really doesn't matter, yep. okay? Um, now for some people, it does matter, right? If you're gonna be a competitive CrossFit athlete, you have to be proficient at gymnastics, all of them. Um, you're going to have to be proficient at the cleans and the snatches. Um, I know us, we stopped doing uh, Olympic weightlifting because it simply was something that we were not able to do enough and more frequently enough to where athletes got proficient enough to where it actually accomplished the goal, right? So we go back to that second goal. I said they need to be able to do it well enough to accomplish their training goals, right? The snatch, for example, we would have athletes struggling through the snatch for six, eight, ten weeks and they were nowhere close to where their actual training loads needed to be to make it a strength exercise, yep. right? And so we just kind of stopped doing the snatch. I mean, I still love it, it's a great exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, we still do the cleans, it seems athletes can uh, pick up the clean a little bit faster. Yep. But it kind of comes down to this question of like, what are you trying to accomplish? And it is the juice worth the squeeze on some of these exercises? Yep. Is, especially if you're on a limited time frame, yep. right? It, it's like, how much training time do you have and how important is it to get good at a specific movement? Yeah, so, <clears throat> There's a number of things that you touched on that I, I think are really valuable. Um, and really, I think the most important the one I, I want to uh, drill down on a little bit is the idea of the Swiss Army effect, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, if you look at a Swiss Army knife, uh, like the, it, it's got a bunch of different functions, right? But it's not really good at anything that any of the th tools that it has, it's not very good, a good tool, right? Mm -hmm. The scissors on a Swiss Army knife suck. The knife on a Swiss Army knife sucks, right? If you just have a, a knife made for just being a knife, it's going to be a lot better at it mm -hmm. than, than a Swiss Army knife is, right? So the Swiss Army effect, the more things that you're trying to do, you dilute the effectiveness of every one thing, every one competency. Um, and so what Jake is talking about with us getting rid of compa complex movements like the snatch is simply the idea that we would rather do fewer things better, understanding that we have different uh, ways to get the same effect of a snatch out of our athletes that requires a lot less technical ability, okay? And so you need to uh, understand that paring down your exercise menu is a really good first step in achieving mastery of movements because you're gonna be doing fewer things. If you look at power lifters, mm -hmm. they have three movements mm -hmm. that they're trying to get good at and they train those three movements. Now they're gonna use accessory movements here and there, but they're not going to go into uh, Olympic movements and really start to change up their movement patterns um, because they want to be good at those three main lifts that they're going to compete at. All right. And so paring down your exercise menu is a really uh, good idea for you to make sure that you're not uh, having the Swiss Army effect. Now, some sports and, and um, avenues of training like CrossFit necessarily uh, demand for you to try to be a jack of all trades, but you have to understand that the the uh, that's going to be a longer curve to actual mastery than somebody who's going to be working on on fewer movements. Um, 
So keep in mind the Swiss Army effect whenever you're working on these. Um, Jake also mentioned that like, hey, you need to have like a minimum threshold of movement quality to ensure safety and effectiveness, right? Not only is uh, that like the safety oftentimes leads to effectiveness. For example, in the deadlift, if you cannot keep a neutral spine, uh, not only is it not safe, but you're also not really training your uh, glutes and hamstrings in the way that you should be mm -hmm. because you're not probably getting leg drive into the ground. You're really just forcing your back to extend your shoulders over your hips. That's not the idea of a deadlift. Um, <clears throat> and so we want, the, the final thing is that the quality you should always be aiming to increase the quality of your movement in the deadlift for example or paring down your exercise you should always be trying to improve the quality of your movements but if you're doing too many things mm -hmm. then you're you may not be able to increase the quality of your movement and i say that because training is a long game all right and uh strength in my mind is much more than the absolute numbers that you're lifting a lot of strength is in how well you move against the resistance, the quality of your movement. And so even though you don't, you don't need to do all these crazy different movements, you don't need to be proficient at 15, 20 different movements. You really just need to be good at the ones that are core to what you're doing and understand that you should always be trying to master those at a different level, knowing that you don't need to be at a crazy high level to get the most out of it, but that there should be a goal in your process to always be better than what you were the week before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I understand. We're not saying you don't have to be good at exercise. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. We're not yes. saying that. We're we, coaches. So we're, we, we are saying that we want you to be as efficient as possible. Utilize your time as well as you can. If I mean, the funny thing is we always use the back squat, bench press, deadlift as our strength metrics. I think there's only myself, Dan, and maybe one other athlete has ever done a powerlifting meet. Okay? So, like, when you think about this, a lot of the – assessments and measurements that we take or the, the ideas and rules, they, we pull these from competitive sport, okay? Um, and especially in the strength, it all revolves around the big three or Olympic weightlifting, the, the snatch and clean. Uh, but realistically, if you don't plan on stepping on a platform at some point, then you need to be able to squat, deadlift, and bench safely and effectively, okay? You might not have to get super nerdy with like bar position, stance, this, all these very small minutia, right? Like how much you know, how big your chest is in the bottom of the bench and how much your shoulder blades are tucked. Those are all very sp sport specific things that are gonna translate to a higher number in a meet that will allow you to place better. It doesn't really mean you're stronger, right? If, if I take my chest and make it this much bigger and I shorten my range of motion by two inches, I'm gonna be able to move more weight with the same amount of strength I have, right? So if I change my technique and I'm able to move more weight, am I stronger? No, the, the, the strength didn't change from one set to the next but the output that is measured has changed. So we have to understand that it's not always gonna be like the pounds lifted are gonna be you getting stronger. You might just become a more efficient squatter, all right? And we see it a lot with new athletes, high school athletes as well, where it's like, how are they hitting a one rep max every week? It's like, you know, they're becoming more efficient, the clean and snatch the same thing, yep. same bad get-ups, right? Yep. It, it's, it's not a very technically demanding movement, but we can take athletes who are very, very fit, good runners, good at CrossFit, who have never done a sand bag get-up, and it just crushes them. Because <laughs> they're just not efficient at it, you know, and why would they be? Right, yeah. So I think big takeaway here, uh, if training time is limited, stick to the basics. Get to a level of proficiency where you can do it safely, and the movement is effective. Jordan's example is great with the deadlift. Um, and then obviously always strive to get better at the exercise and more efficient, but understand if you're not stepping on that platform, if you're not going to a CrossFit meet, if you're not going to go do an Olympic weightlifting meet, then you being really, really good at that exercise might not make that big of a difference.